Hi everyone, welcome to Gem Chem. Now today's video is on new series that is chemistry in daily life. In this video, we are going to deal with different topics dealing with the chemistry of our daily life. It is a part of your BSc syllabus and in each video we are going to cover a bulk topic. I am going to just discuss a PDF on that and you are going to get the PDF link in the telegram. So you can read from there. Okay. So today's topic of discussion is dairy product first part where we are going to deal with milk and milk products. So first of all in this case you have to know a general discussion about the milk composition and what is milk made up of. So as we know the general things which are present in milk is first protein. Next we have fats, calcium, magnesium, selenium, riboflavin, vitamin B12 and pantothenic acid. Similarly, composition of milk varies because the milk comes from different dairy animals, different breed, they have different age, as well as what they eat, what are their stages of lactation, etc. So, here we can see the milk composition which is given here. We have approximately water, then we can have carbohydrate, fats, proteins, and proteins can contain different protein that is casein whey protein similarly we can go for vitamins so you can see fat soluble vitamins as well as water soluble vitamin and minerals so what is important here is that with respect to chemistry the proteins which we are talking about what are they made up of what is the structure what is the role for example if we are talking about lactose then in that case it is a disaccharide which is made up of glucose and galactose and the role is to provide energy and it is less sweet than sugar. Next, if we go for casein, then this is also a type of protein. It is alpha, beta and kappa casein present, which are the types of the casein. And role is, it helps to make curd during the cheese making also, it plays a role. Similarly, whey protein is a type of protein which contains different types, beta, lactoglobulin, alpha, lactal, albumin and etc. So here you can see the roles given, similarly for fatty acids types given, calcium content is also being mentioned and these are the vitamin contents. So this is actually a detailed description of the components present in a milk. Now if we talk about the dairy products, that includes cream. So the composition of cream is also being discussed here. You can see this is for your knowledge purpose. And if we go for butter, butter composition is also been given here. So here butter has fats, types of fats is being mentioned. Similarly, butter contains water, proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals. If we go for cheese, then it contains water and there is variety of content of water. As there is different types of cheese, hard, semi-hard, soft, fresh, etc. Similarly, the cheese contains fat proteins, carbohydrate, vitamins and minerals. Now we go for dahi that is curd, yogurt. So yogurt composition is actually made up of water, carbohydrate, fats, proteins, vitamins and what type of vitamins is also being mentioned here and few minerals. And last is here in this case ice cream. So it contains water, fat, carbohydrate, proteins and vitamins along with some minerals. So these components and their understanding is appreciated because we will get a nutritional value of milk and milk products and how they play a role in our daily balanced diet can be understood by seeing these compositions. Now the second part of our discussion is how to analyze the fat content and the minerals which is present in milk and butter. So in that case to determine the fat content specifically there is some chemical analysis method. First is that alkaline hydrolysis method or known as Rose, Gottlieb or gravimetric method which involves that we hydrolyze the milk sample using ammonia and then taking out the fat with the help of dietyl ether and light petrol. Once can detect that how much fat is present. This can help to detect the raw cow milk fat content, similarly sheep milk fat content and etc. So mainly we are concerned with how to take out the fat and measure how much it is present in a particular amount of milk. Second is butyrometric method or Gerber method where we are using volumetric method 
This starts with the digestion of the protein in the milk with sulfuric acid. Then the fat in the milk is separated out using the process of centrifugation. And the centrifugation is carried out by butyrometer. And the fat content which is obtained is directly read by the butyrometer scale. So this method is helping us to test the liquid milk fully or partially skimmed milk that is its fat content is already removed. We can see its amount of fat present in it and etc. Pasteurized milk can also be obtained its fat content. Now we are going for the next one where we are dealing with infrared spectroscopy. So this is a very important part of our chemistry. So it also helps us to understand what is the fat content in milk by milk and obtain the result within minutes. Next we are going to see how to analyze the minerals in the milk. So in order to analyze the minerals in the milk and butter, the specific methods are being mentioned here. One is atomic absorption spectroscopy, other is inductively coupled plasma, mass spectrometry and induced coupled plasma optical emission spectrometry. So all these are a kind of spectrometry which gives us direct result about the sample content and the mineral content within that sample and what is the concentration of different specific elements present in it. The last part of this topic of discussion is suppose milk contains a lot of water. So how can you estimate that what amount of water is added to the milk? So this is done by few commonly used techniques. One is lactometer test that uh, a device it is used which measures the density of milk. So pure milk has a specific range of density. If its density is lower what happens is that the lactometer floats over the milk. So we can understand okay this milk is having less density so much water is added to it. Second is that freezing point depression. So watering down the milk changes its freezing point mainly. So if you see a pure milk it generally freezes at about minus 0 0.55 degrees Celsius. So in that case if you are seeing that it is freezing much below that then you are of course sure that much water is added. Next method is conductivity test. So adding water to milk just helps to increase the conductivity of the milk. As a result when you measure the conductivity you can understand that conductivity has increased okay. So this is my milk with lot of water in it. Now if you detect the fat content within it. So fat content is a critical parameter. Diluting the milk will decrease the fat content. So we have already seen what is the method to, you know, understand the fat content in the milk and the butter. So from there you can detect. Another method is solids not fat content. So water dilution, solids not fat content gets decreased. What does that mean? The solid content which is present in the milk will obviously get diluted once you add a lot of water to it. So a gravimetric analysis or infrared milk analyzer is used to identify that. Another and the last one is refractometer test. It is a way to measure the refractive index of the milk which changes when water is added. So we are going to place few drops of milk on the refractometer and then read out the refractive index, compare the reading with the standard value. If it doesn't match, you can understand that it contains water. So through this we can understand that how chemistry is involved in our daily life, what are the methods in which we can be aware around us that what is going on. So using this method we can easily estimate the extent of water adulteration in milk done. So for more accurate results it is often best to use a combination of this test. So here the topic of discussion about the first part of chemistry in daily life 